Thank you very much, um, Tagusa, for the music. And, uh, thank you very much. Um, this is a live stream from South Africa, a gathering of indigenous activists from across African continent. Um, we are speaking uh, our role in securing the planet from the indigenous community's perspective. And I am Samuel Nangiria from Maasai community of Tanzania. And I would like uh, my colleagues to introduce themselves before we go deep into the subject. I am Francis Shomet Olanayesa from Tanzania, from the Maasai community. And uh, I am one of the co-founders of a Pan-African Living Cultures Alliance, which is a very big strategy we are working on in an attempt to unite indigenous uh, communities in the African continent in order to conserve environment, to revitalize our cultural system, and to contribute to the efforts to save the planet from possible extinction. My name is Cromwell Sonjika from Omatiba, a club in Pizana is my hometown. I am a South African. I am the activist there. And I am passionate to see most of young people across the world taking care of the nature because that's what gives us lives. Thank you. Um, I'm Malungile Changase from Wonderland, and I'm so happy to be here to share the story of our land to other people from other countries. Thank you. I'm Pafatari Asafa. I came from Ethiopia, from southern region, from Gam people. Really, I appreciate this unity for indigenous practice and the knowledge to become up. Thank you. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Jilo Katelo. Um, I am from uh, Kenya, particularly northern part of Kenya, uh, bordering uh, Sudan, Ethiopia, and Somalia. I am very happy, very, very extremely happy actually to join this alliance of indigenous group, uh, uh, particularly also using video for change in uh, effort trying to, to rescue actually our planet from the problem and challenges of development. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Ivan Falvoy. I'm originally from the Northern Cape. I'm in South Africa. I belong to the Tawny Sun community. Um, and yeah, I'm extremely happy to be here. Uh, good morning. My name is Lunge Lomta from Eastern Cape in Kolobeni. Uh, I'm happy to be here and uh, uh, I've been listening, listening to stories from uh, other people from other countries, indigenous people especially and how they are fighting their struggles, how, how, we can, how can we fight our struggle using their techniques and their strategies. And uh, hopefully I will go back home and bring a lot to my people to continue fighting our struggle. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Askola from the Maasai community, an indigenous community from Kenya, the southern part of Kenya, the border of Kenya, Tanzania. I am also working uh, with participating in video in 
Kilo Lama, that is the voice of Ma, and uh, inside here. Thank you. Yeah, good morning, everyone. I'm Elias Kimayo from Indigenous and Work Community in Kenya, in Western Kenya. So my pleasure to be here to learn and uh, share my experience about participatory feature. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm Magela Lenatiyama from Kenya, from the Molo community. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Hello, I'm called uh, Enyini Chimuti. I'm from Cameroon. Uh, I'm from uh, eastern region of our country. I'm from an uh, indigenous community called the Baka people. And uh, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Bonjour, je m'appelle Patrick Saidi. Je viens de la République démocratique du Congo, dans la grande famille des peuples autochtones pygmées. C'est un plaisir d'être là avec mes frères de l'Afrique, afin qu'on puisse partager ensemble sur les défis qui sont les nôtres, mais aussi réfléchir sur les pistes et les solutions qu'on doit envisager pour faire face à ces problèmes et les défis environnementaux actuels. Merci. Ok, thank you so much. Uh for introduction and for those who are joining us, this is a live stream from South Africa, uh, a gathering of indigenous activists from across the continent, um, trying to see the potentiality of using uh, video for change as a strategy to communicate, to build internal solidarity, and promote uh, techniques, traditional and cultural that contribute to the saving the planet. And this is, um, an event that we are trying to communicate how the living culture and video for change can contribute to the saving the planet. And we understand indigenous community all over the world have been ignored. Uh, their voices have not had an opportunity to join the mainstream voices. And we have a lot of untold stories about how we relate with nature and what we can really contribute as indigenous people. So I'm here with my uh, tribe, uh, colleagues and they are here to share uh, what we can do and how we can contribute to the saving the planet as from possible extinction. So I invite uh, Amos to start with how the indigenous knowledge from the Maasai community can contribute uh, in this strategy where we see the whole planet is, is, is now in danger of extinction. Okay, as my colleague Say, my name is Amos Leuka. I came from Kenya, Maasai community, and I'm passionate about the connection we have here as indigenous people. Our aim of uh, forming an alliance, which I'm happy to be a member, is to make sure that our connection remains as community. Uh, just one thing that I want to put across, uh, he told us how the Maasai people have been conserving the environment. <coughs> the indigenous knowledge of the Maasai people has been paramount in saving the environment, and that is why the remaining part of our land is so much conserved mm -hmm. by the indigenous knowledge. What I can tell the world and all the indigenous people is let us use our existing knowledge to ensure that we conserve the environment. As it has been, we used to live by that environment to ensure that that environment feeds us and we also support that environment. Our culture respects that and that is why it remains the way it is. We are being faced by a number of challenges. This includes mega development projects which are being brought and bring a lot of destruction to the environment. It also includes a change of livelihood where people are running to make a modern life. And our uh, uh, coexistence with the environment has been friendly. So what I can urge the international community, our governments in Africa, let us embrace 
our cultural system which respect and honor our environment. And for those who are joining us, it's a live stream from South Africa. And this is a gathering of indigenous people, activists from across the continent uh, who are passionate learning how video can be used as one of the tools to promote uh, the recognition, promote their ways of life, and also to advocate for the rights of their communities. Uh, I invite uh, Shomet to, to share with us how can we, as indigenous people, contribute to the journey of saving the planet or rather, are we, how much are we feeling about the destruction and what is happening in our communities? Thank you, Samuel, for inviting me. And I'm happy to be <coughs> part of uh, this event. Indeed, indigenous people have been at the forefront in the conservation of environment and wise utilization of natural resources. But this has never been understood by the modern mainstream society. It is now the will and the intention and decision of the indigenous people to develop a strategy which we can use to unite the indigenous communities across the African continent and use the same strategy to communicate with our leaders at the national level, with the regional bodies, ECOWAS, SADC, East Africa, and the other regional bodies, AU, in order to actually make the regional bodies to understand uh, indigenous people indigenous uh, cultural systems and biocultural rights and by the same token to uh, recognize our traditional natural resource management systems and actually recognize our cultural systems and how the same can be utilized to promote the knowledge to inspire people in Africa as well as across the planet to turn back on modern development forces which have contributed to actual destruction of our planet. I'm calling the whole planet to actually uh, try to understand indigenous knowledge systems and their, their coexistence within nature for many ages and how this can inspire us to revent new knowledge, new ways new mindset in order to conserve the planet. Thanks so much. Uh, for those of you who are behind us can also uh, ask a question or contribute. If you have anything you can contribute. The message here is coming very clearly that um, the whole planet is now feeling, the communities are feeling the climate change. Um, this is a result of a continued destruction of natural resources and also uh, the ignorance of natural laws that govern the whole universe. And the way um, policies have translated that into uh, practical action on the, on the ground, promoting uh, capitalism, promoting uh, business in the expense of environment. And Lohulung uh, Yehitupia has bought Nabaru has book at Wuda Alam Maguaza Lebatana, who latched him Slena Baru has book, Massabe and Lebet. A cheer alam Tafatroat at Abuko Akababio at Sarto Menayo, Wunzo Chahulu, Abuko Ufo Chahulu, Menayo Nalinad Minchilo, Batele Africa, Bagara, ye Nabaru has book as sent a book of Chalona, a bakachu, Yafrica Marioch. Libya, Skadabu Africa, Ka Somalia, Ska Senegal, Yalla Chubata Kale, Yen Nagar Asabachu, Batale Marioj, the Mitsaba Sabu Bessa at Hulu, Sele Nabaru Katana Selaya to Chachul Tasabuka. Just I try to, by English, listen all African leaders. Just understand the ancestors, your child, everything, the birds, the tree. The land, the rivers, 
they wait you to make together with <coughs> indigenous people to bring up Africa to fly. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for those who are joining this uh, event. Uh, this is a live stream from South Africa. Uh, it's uh, an event of indigenous activists from across the region. Uh, having been here for the last three days and now having a live stream communicating their feelings around <coughs> issues of conserving the planet, but how cultures can contribute, how indigenous knowledge can contribute to the to the journey of saving the planet. Welcome to Abuzwa. I'm a Kushaku is Kaukaza Kamoya, Tibiza, Onge, Amaba, and Laglinda, O Sikuyo. I've just uh, sent my greetings and acknowledging the ancestors of the space and acknowledging the space and <coughs> calling all nations into the space equally. My name is Mtwagazi. Uh, I'm a rural activist. I'm a traditional music activist uh, using um, the idea of uh, a calabash which is an object that uh, speaks uh, unity, which is an object uh, that is uh, multifunctional. From a nutritional point of view, you can cook and eat it, you can roast the seeds and eat them. From a therapeutic point of view, uh, you can actually make music out of it. You can store herbs, you can store, you can make sour milk, uh, you can actually recycle and make jewelry out of the same object. And the challenges that uh, I face uh, in my village, trying to work <coughs> with children and reviving and preserving our indigenous music uh, is that our people have tend to look down on the messages of the earth because this is one object that comes from the earth. So how I connect with my ancestors with the earth is that every October we plant uh, these instruments with the early childhood development from my village and not to be necessarily narrow about where I come from, but it's a dream that I hope to see uh, taking place on a transnational or in a global uh, level uh, to have all nations celebrating this object because it's the object of our forefathers. So how I heal the earth is that I, I use music to connect with the earth. And with music, I can get messages on how I envision a better future with equity and anti-black racism and uh, the eradication of white supremacy so that our people can find space of belonging and can sp find space of healing. Uh, my name is Mtwagazi and I have spoken. Thank you so much Mtwagazi for your powerful uh, message across using the Calabash. And for those who are just joining, this is a live stream from South Africa. Uh, the gathering of indigenous activists from across Africa uh, talking about how we can contribute to the process and, and the journey of saving the planet by using our traditional and indigenous knowledge uh, that has seemed to be resilient and been struggling against development and new colonial uh, colonialism that is rampant across the planet now people coming up with money and destroying the environment so I'm calling upon Patrick uh, from Congo to, to share with us uh, wisdoms from his community. But also, if anyone is having questions and you know, any comment, you can just let me know. We can invite you. Thanks, Samuel. My name is Patrick Saidi. I viens de la République Democratique du Congo. Et uh, pour nous, donc, uh, les Autochtones, c'est un plaisir d'être ici. Euh, non seulement pour euh, faire part aux problèmes qui sont les nôtres, comme les, mes collègues l'ont dit. Actuellement, il y a beaucoup de problèmes dans le monde, il y a tous ces problèmes liés au changement climatique, mais il y a aussi des problèmes auxquels les autochtones font face au niveau local, notamment tous les problèmes liés aux terres, tous les problèmes liés aujourd'hui à la disparition de tous ces savoirs endogènes, de toutes ces connaissances traditionnelles, comme euh, on veut déjà de l'attendre. Mais il y a aussi des défis actuellement liés à nos langues traditionnelles qu'on est déjà en train de perdre aujourd'hui. Or que si nous faisons la comparaison, vu la façon dont le monde évolue, on comprendra aujourd'hui que ce sont les terres ou les espaces où vivent les peuples autochtones qui sont encore le mieux protégés. Alors comment effectivement 
nous amener dans ces défis mondiaux en capitaliser effectivement les espaces qui sont les nôtres et qui constituent aujourd'hui la solution idoine à ces problèmes liés au changement climatique. Les autochtones ne sont pas les destructeurs de la terre, mais les protecteurs par excellence. Donc, prendre en compte les autochtones, prendre en compte leurs contributions, prendre en compte effectivement leurs savoirs endogènes et pratiques traditionnelles, revient à donner une solution à ces problèmes actuels, à ces défis actuels qui est le changement climatique. Merci. What, what can you say about uh, that collision between development and saving the planet? Obviously, uh, we are at crossroads in terms of development and uh, indigenous uh, livelihood. For example, I come from Gabra community, generally Borana Oromo speaker in northern Kenya. Our livelihood, just like Maasai and any other pastoral community, depend on livestock. Livestock is about mobility. It's about movement within the rangeland. And the rangeland for us, a big, vast land for us, as is, is very useful. We don't build skyscrapers. We don't build roads. <coughs> but they are very useful. Our livelihood, our livelihood is about those livestock, and those livestock is about huge, vast land. But for any other person who comes from outside, or any development mentally, I mean a, a pro-development person who think that road construction, railways uh, is useful, then he will see the huge land that we have as a wasteland. Is it true? Is it? So, what we are saying is this, that it is very much incompatible. Development and pastoral livelihood, for example, cannot marry each other. Conservation and indigenous knowledge and livelihood marry. So, it is important for us to, be in, uh, to make sure that as we develop, we become conscious Because, for example, if the highways and roads in northern Kenya, for example, speaking of my community, the lapset that is going to clear the range line, huge range line, is going to bring a huge problem to pastoral community. Why? The road and the highways, those who are, will manage to build petrol stations, those who will manage to build big hotels, are the people from cities. How about the pastoral community who has lived there since time immemorial? The fruit is too high for them to reach. And their livelihood has been shattered. So the same way, like Maasai, like Gabra, Borana, Rendille, Samburu, Sahuye, for example, talking of Kenya, these are all pastoral communities. And their livelihood is pegged on land. And development must be conscious. If you are to develop, I don't know what, the way Mr. Sean said yesterday, This animal called development is very daring. It's going to shatter the life of all the indigenous livelihood, the life, and it's going to be a big mess for the, everybody in the world. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yellow, for thank yeah. you for your contribution. <coughs> This right. is very becoming very clear that um, uh, uh, development and and conservation of nature are two different things that yeah. do not go together. Um, unless it is mindful that this is development being done in a way that does not destroy. Uh, this is a live stream from South Africa for those who are joining and those who are just seeing for the first time. And we have indigenous activists from indigenous communities of Africa yeah. here in South Africa. Um, we welcome anyone watching to, to keep watching because it's a message to, to the global leaders, to the United Nations, to everybody. Mm -hmm. And also standing with those who are Um, rebelling in, in Europe and America uh, for the sake of Fight for fighting for the extinction and we are part of them in the spirit and the messages we are giving is to support uh, the movement to support to support the movement because this is we are not exceptional we are also feeling the same pinch across so um, Thank you. I welcome my friend from Coen Sun community And I would like him to <coughs> focus on what messages do we have for the United Nations because this is, a, this is an opportunity, a space that we have <coughs> to share what we can tell those people who make decisions, people who make policies, people who fund projects, people, you know. What messages do we have, do you have for the United Nations and maybe even for the governments of Africa? 
Yeah, so I think, um, thank you for the opportunity. Um, yeah, I think first of all in South Africa what we have to do is we have to find ways of finding healing. And I think um, that's one of the biggest discussions is happening now. Um, the repatriation of human remains that we have in South Africa. Um, a lot of our elders, um, our ancestors, are in universities, um, in all sorts of research institutions. And I think part of the way moving forward and to find healing in that space um, is really so much about having our, our human remains, or what people are referring to as human remains, but it's really our ancestors, you know, and they need to find peace in the land. Um, to have them brought back to us um, and to have that space where we can actually lay them to rest and where we can have a stone of remembrance, where we can honor them um, in, 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 in that space. And I think um, in terms of us moving forward, it's, um, it's so much also about um, trying to find ways of how we can heal the people. Um, because I think it's important that if you heal the people, the people will start looking at how to find ways in healing the land. And I think it's only in finding healing that we can actually productively move forward. Um, there's so many discussions that we still need to have um, in South Africa, for example. Also, there's so many <coughs> issues um, that we're dealing with. Um, as, as an indigenous person from the, the southern Kalahari, um, we have had many challenges, and um, some of these challenges are keep on persisting um, as we find ourselves in, in today's life. Um, there's a lot of things that have influenced our, our lives in a way. Um, some of the biggest issues that we're also feeling now quite heavily in the Kalahari um, and also in a lot of other spaces in South Africa um, is really so much climate change. It is something that is really something that is affecting us. Um, and especially if you go to the rural areas or the areas um, that are sort of like your outskirts really where there's very little development and all of that those are the areas where you also find quite a number of these indigenous people mm. um, um, yeah. um, i'm very uh, eager to, to, to get the messages mm. you say the first thing is healing because the communities have been fragmented and human remains used for research and all this what other messages in, in connection to that do we have for do you feel to send or to, to take to the United Nations and others who are making decisions from the broader what, yeah. what messages hmm. or message yeah. do you have for the UN? I think um, it's, it's so much also how we can find combination of how we can um, or rather to have an open <coughs> space um, where you can have people of all these different layers or all these different levels sorry um, to actually come together and to see how we can look at more sustainable, more green ways of going forward. Um, and and, and it, it's, it's really so much a discussion that needs to start from the ground level moving upwards and not a top-down approach. Um, you need to have this discussion um, inviting indigenous people who have lived in these spaces for centuries, who has a lot of these answers. And I think only once you provide that space, um, I think then you will have a meaningful discussion as to the way that you can move forward. So are you asking UN to, to support in terms of uh, giving uh, uh, space to be able to share what you have as a community or what do you think is, how do you frame your message? Do you ask for space? Yeah, I think most definitely, you know, we, we, we've been, I, um, I think there is a couple of these spaces that are available, but it's inaccessible, especially to people like myself, you know, coming from the Kalahari in the Northern Cape, um, where it's difficult, first of all, you know, we are, we are having issues like not having electricity, there is very bad um, reception in terms of cell phones, um, laptops, etc. So it's very difficult to get messages from the outside coming into the communities and it's also difficult for our people to understand those messages. So I think we need to work more towards finding um, practical ways of how this message can then be sort of ingrained into the communities. Uh, do you think if a video could, could, could be one of the ways we, we can use uh, to take these messages across from the community to the national level of the UN? Do you think this could be one way of supporting the communities and taking the phrases to the next level? Um, 
video in itself it's a very powerful tool it's 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 a tool that allow um, the other people to see and feel and experience what it is that you as a speaker are going through at that particular stage and I think in, in, in this um, instance you have video for change that is a different um, a method that is used to convey that message um, and I think yes most definitely this is this is the type of, of, of solutions or the type of methodology that we are looking for in order to get that message out okay thank you so much for those who are joining us uh, from within South Africa and the globally this is a live stream from uh, indigenous activists from Africa uh, and we have a new question from uh, Twitter um, audience worldwide um, how can those of us support from a distance this is a question that is posed to all of us myself and the colleagues seated behind me so who has an answer for that how can how can those of us support from a distance somebody is asking okay well um i think um as indigenous people we were use, uh, using our traditional knowledge and uh, our uh, problem was not really uh, resolved as well and uh, we are thinking that today we can use uh, uh, modern tools like, like uh, twitter so through twitter we can uh, share uh, our videos we can talk to other uh, communities, we can talk to even uh, members of uh, uh, United Nations or UA uh, to make sure that uh, we indigenous peoples, we can uh, also uh, use uh, this kind of uh, uh, um, uh, tools to the network, to int internet. So because we know that today um, many people uh, use uh, even Facebook or Twitter and um, by the video for change uh, is going to be uh, an opportunity a way for us to to share to the world what we are facing uh, in our com uh, communities and in our countries so I think uh, that's what uh, we can do through uh, Twitter uh, to support the movement has started and this is the beginning of the movement and your support can is really to make this movement moving forward to reach the people who are not with us today to ensure that we have all the indigenous people on board that is the support we can give so we need all financial support the resources support and also any support that make us come together and share our common knowledge thank you so much um the movement has started in africa and this is uh anyone wanting to support we will share uh, how because we are working with networks from other places like in such which has been supporting with the video for change and particularly video as an approach that brings indigenous people together and very quickly we are seeing some results of this because if it were not for the particularly video that we've just started two years ago which is now uniting the african continent um, I'm inviting Lunkelo, Lunkelo to be able to speak about uh, the connection between uh, the young generation and the land given the challenges of technology, globalization. What can you say about your connection in the land of your youth, but also traditional knowledge and, and the cultures of your community? <coughs> okay, before, before I go, I'd like to say uh, according to the stories that I've heard and the uh, people have shared, I realized that what defines an indigenous community or people is their language, is their culture, is their way of living, is their connection. And, and as I'm one of the youngest people to be in this gathering, I've, I've realized that uh, most people that are trying to save Earth people who are trying to use indigenous knowledge to, to save Earth from extinction, from uh, all the all kind of destructions, uh, are actually old people. And we as youth are, are staying in the background, are taking the backseat, we are not fighting 
we are not coming into to this struggle. And I think we will realize the importance of this when the time is late. And we as youth, I think uh, because we are kind of sophisticated about uh, technology and using videos and, and those uh, internet stuff, I think it's our, it's our time to, to, to join the movement, to join the struggle and start using videos for, for change and start using videos to, to, to rub, to erase the borders between Africa. Because I think that's one of the main uh, cures, the main remedies that we can use to, to, to save this aid. If we can erase the borders between, Af between countries in Africa, and we say one Africa under one roof, not umbrellas in each and every country, but one roof. Because I've realized that we are fighting the same struggles. That result means that we have the same roots. Because we are all fighting a struggle of, uh, of land, struggles of being evicted from our native land, struggles of uh, fighting for forests, fighting for, for, for grazing. We are all fighting the same struggles. And some countries like, uh, like uh, from Tanzania, Mesa people, uh, uh, have control in their land now. And I think we can share in this gathering, uh, as we have shared some, some, some strategies, we can share uh, the ways that we can use indigenous knowledge to fight struggles. And, uh, but, but, but you as a youth uh, from indigenous community, do you feel part of the process of defending your land and do you have opportunities uh, within your community? Uh, do you feel like being recognized by the elders and other people? Or do you feel isolated? What is your position? Very briefly. Okay, my, my position, I, I feel uh, because uh, indigenous knowledge still exists in them, in, in, in all people, and we as youth, we don't have that much knowledge. If we can try to penetrate to them and we ask for knowledge and how they are doing things, how they were doing things before, and uh, I think that can help us to understand first indigenous knowledge, then we can use their knowledge and meet with ours of, of the modern world to, 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 to try to, to, to change the things and to, to, to go back to, to our roots, to restore our culture, to restore our humanity, to restore, to restore the respect because mm -hmm. as, uh, those are the elements that define a person. Thank you so much. Uh, for, for those who are joining, um, uh, this is a, a live stream from South Africa. Uh, a gathering of indigenous activists from across Africa. We've been here for three days and trying to see how we can make a um, uh, video for change a practical approach to, to fight the walls of inequalities. And so I'm inviting a brother from Kenya, from Segway community. Segway yeah. community. So thank you, Samuel. I think uh, indigenous communities are the best stewardship to to conserve and preserve our forests and our cultures. So the issue now is policy that governments have made and the conservation funders. So we need at least to change those, uh, those conservation policies that are in place now that, um, that are preventing indigenous communities to care for their land. Because indigenous people are best stewards to care for their land, their way of life, their way of how to use their land sustainably. So the issue of now, like in our uh, co in my community, whereby possible eviction is, is taking place each and every time, we need those evictions to stop because one human rights violation is, is being made. Secondly, our environment also is being destroyed if eviction is going on. Uh, we have many examples around Africa and around the world whereby. It shows exactly that if communities are empowered, indigenous communities are empowered to care their land, it is the best than where the state are caring. So because actually <coughs> state are uh, the people who are using this land unsustainably, like logging, charcoal burning. So they have all the resources to and permits to keep to loggers and everyone else. So whereas indigenous communities are the best to care for their land. I think that is what I can say about 
Yeah. Thank you so much, Segwe. Um, there's, a, there's a comment from a Twitter <coughs> use, Liz Gold from UK, saying, wonderful to join you from UK uh, in solidarity with you from Extinction Rebellion here. So people are really um, watching and they, they are feeling connected. And right. In fact, we are standing with them uh, across the movement, across Europe and America and Africa as well. We are with them in this uh, movement because we are all together in these surveys and we are feeling uh, going to exempt. So welcome Amos, uh, very briefly. Uh, thank you, our listeners. I just want to say a few comments. Uh, uh, we have said, we have spoken, a lot have been said, and this is in relation to indigenous people. Uh, the message now to the, the world leaders and the indigenous people leaders is that you should also go, you should not go and sit in your comfort zone as indigenous leaders to wait to be told. You know your role, you know what you have been doing to preserve what the people are seeing as good. Wake up and make sure that your community is doing what has been doing that uh, bring you up, uh, up to now. The other thing, you need also to transfer the wisdom and knowledge to the younger generation. That knowledge will not be left with you, but should also be transferred to the next generation so that the connection continues. To the world leaders, we are here gathering today, and we call upon you that in your policy, <coughs> there is nothing for us without us. The world leaders should also ensure that we are involved in policy making so that nothing can be for us without us. That's the message I want to send to you, such that in all the gathering, including the AU, the regional body like East African community, SADC, the indigenous people should be involved in those decision making. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Uh, I'm calling upon my uh, to talk about uh, how the young people, the young generation, now that we have you in the middle of uh, globalization, indigenous knowledge is pulling you apart. <laughs> Uh, the world is taking you to be a global citizen and the indigenous community needs you to continue with the journey that your ancestors, your fathers have been fighting to keep their cultures, to keep their land, to keep their identity. What, do you, what, do you, what messages do you have for the youth across Africa and the world uh, in, in, that, in, that, in that level? Okay, I'm Balungile from Kolobing. Mm, I think it's time to to youth to fight for our people, to fight for our indigenous community. And I was so hurt when I heard the stories how our indigenous community be treated. I think as a youth, we must stand up and fight for our life, fight for our culture, fight for our people. That's the message for me. To, to the youth. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Uh, we have uh, a brother from the Molo community, and um, it's also a youth. Um, uh, a lot has been said about youth uh, taking charge, youth, the allegation that youth do not want to listen to the elders, but also youth are saying we are not involved. Thank you. Um, can you say something about the experiences from your community, but also the message to the youth across the indigenous community worldwide? Uh, yes, thank you, Father Hamos. Uh, my name is Magela Lanathiyama from El Molo community. Uh, a message that I'm having from the youth is that it is our responsibility to take care of our environment, to take care of this art that we are talking about. The art is for all of us, the, the minority or the indigenous people or for everybody. So it is the responsibility of each and every person from each and every youth to be responsible in the caring of their art, in the caring of this environment. Because as a youth, as it has been said, that the, the, the future belongs to us. So it is, our, it is our responsibility to get hand together and work for the, what we want, the art that we want to be. Or anyway, we should not have the life after this. There's no life after this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, my brother from Cameroon. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you have comments on the <coughs> messages to to the global uh, leaders, to the 
policymakers very quickly, like one minute, because we are, we are winding up very soon. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, I just want to say that uh, it's uh, very important for us, like indigenous people, to have, uh, firstly, a kind of uh, network uh, concerning uh, indigenous media where we can uh, share together from Central Africa to the East Africa to the North. To, so to make sure that we, we uh, have our own media that we can uh, fight through the video for change. And uh, I just want uh, also uh, involve uh, UA to make sure that uh, our laws in our country uh, take really effectively uh, into account uh, our <coughs> land, our rights on the land uh, and uh, on the forest. And as she's coming, we have a, a question from Twitter users global asking, is it possible for the communities to heal? This is a question. Is it possible for the communities to heal? Somebody was talking about this healing is the first step because we've had a lot of wounds, a lot of sufferings, a lot of... So this is a question that we need, uh, maybe Shomet will address after, after Mdaguza has spoken a message to the indigenous women, indigenous people across the globe about what can we, um, what is the message we have for solidarity? I think the message will also come from the question itself that uh, as someone who has taken uh, a long journey into the space of healing, I still also find strongly that healing becomes the first solution for me to heal self, to heal others, and who heals the healer, because also the healer too needs healing. Mm -hmm. So, and where do we begin to heal ourselves so that we can be able to heal the earth? And that uh, would require unity, that would require patience, that would require love, that would require uh, communication, that would require solidarity uh, amongst all of us uh, globally. Uh, when I mean communication, that would require all of us checking in on each other, how we are doing, because the kind of work that we're doing as women uh, having to run household, households, and if you also remember, women have played a, a very pivotal role in terms of cultivating the land and when the same land is being brought back into spaces by the traditional leaders, women are being left behind. Women are landless, and women are being objectified. Women are being abused, you know. Women are being brutally beaten. And uh, that pain, that excruciating pain, remains a, a very significant part of healing. And this is why we need to work with the soil and reconcile with the land because we find healing in the land, we find healing in the forestry, we find healing in the waters, we find healing just by seeing the sun rise in the morning. So it's the, sometimes it's the basic things that we tend not to pay attention to. So I'm calling upon all nations, uh, all countries uh, globally, to say for me, the first step is to heal the activists. Thank you, thank you so much, Mdabuza, for creating an important message. Mm -hmm. I'm inviting Chomet. To, to say something around healing, if you have anything to add from what um, Tagusa has just said, because this is very, very comprehensive at the yeah. beginning of it. Yes, very touching. Yeah. And if you don't have much, very like, have a minute, just have a minute because we went up. Yeah, I, I agree that the, the healing process is very important. Uh, because many <coughs> scars and wounds have been inflicted uh, through many years of, uh, of uh, uh, dispossession of land and other natural resources. And this can only be brought about by a process of uh, uh, unity and solidarity and a process of dialogue to discuss issues around land to discuss issues around destruction of the environment and how we can address these issues. So I think 
through their strategy of uh, establishing a solidary entity, an entity which will promote solidarity among indigenous people, this healing process will be possible. But uh, it cannot be possible if each entity, if each ethnic group, each indigenous community group is going to struggle on its own. So I'm going to uh, play a song called Inwembula by the legendary Nofili Shikwili, who passed away in 2004. And this song speaks about colonial invasion that became a huge impact to oppression that gave birth to depression. Mm, thank you. people with this knowledge when the climate change is now hitting everyone so this message has come very clearly and also I think climate change is miscalculated <coughs> in a way it's not a question of climate change this has to be a systemic change a lot is being said about planting trees um, as a measure yes could be but I think it's more of restoring the relationship between human beings and nature than just planting a tree mm -hmm. uh, as if that tree will be will take care of itself. If that was the case, I think it has to go a long way to brokering a relationship, mm -hmm. to restoring a relationship between mankind, environment and the mother earth. Mm -hmm. 
And lastly, it's about uh, solidarity in this case. We still are fighting the colonial problems, the legacies that were left in Africa and other countries. And indigenous communities across Africa have to come together with a strategy to unite their voices, to unite their energy, to unite their aspiration, and struggling not only for their human right, but the rights to the other as well. Thanks so much for listening and watching from all over the world. And we are privileged to have shared this message and in solidarity with our other communities across the world who are rebelling in, in Europe and, and America on the same subject of saving the planet. Thank you so much. Thank you.